This KLRN program is proudly supported by HEB. Dr. Gentry, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the marker that you're working on with a grocery store and the Baptist settlement and some of the other markers that you're working on. Well, uh, I'm part of a team at the uh, UTSA Center for Cultural Sustainability under the uh, directorship of uh, William DuPont. And uh, what we have uh, been doing is establishing the historical uh, documentation behind a couple of sites uh, in San Antonio, uh, one in the Baptist Settlement neighborhood, a, a grocery store that was located at 301 Victoria Street. Um, and that street uh, is no longer there, it no longer exists. It's, uh, the grocery store was located about where the John Wood uh, Federal Courthouse is uh, now. And uh, so what we're hoping to have is a historical marker, which would be a, a registered uh, Texas historical landmark, uh, which is under consideration with the Texas Historical Commission at this time. Uh, that's one site. Uh, that was a, a store that was owned and operated by P.F. Roberts. And uh, we uh, have uh, some evidence showing that he received a loan from uh, Colonel Tom C. Frost uh, to uh, get that land and to uh, start a grocery store where he sold dry goods and uh, meats and, and other uh, general wares for African Americans who during Jim Crow segregation were not allowed to shop in some of the uh, white owned uh, uh, stores. And uh, he married a relative of a famous state rep uh, in uh, the same area that Prairie View A and M is uh, today, Kilpatrick. That's right. Uh, uh, P. F. Roberts' uh, wife was uh, Ira Aldrich Kilpatrick uh, Roberts, and she was an educator in her own right. She actually taught uh, at uh, Prairie View A and M for a number of years, um, math and and some science courses. And so uh, this is a very uh, educated family. They are um, uh, entrepreneurial in the sense that in addition to being educators, they also have these grocery store uh, enterprises. So they open a, a second store uh, in the uh, Denver Heights neighborhood. And it's actually uh, something that uh, uh, P.F. Roberts had to do in order to uh, win the ha hand in marriage of Ira Aldridge Kilpatrick because her father thought that P.F. Roberts was a little too old for her and it was a little suspicious that he was a single man at, at such a late age. Uh, but he um, uh, built the house and across from the house he opened a grocery store uh, at uh, Pine Street, 601 South Pine Street. And so uh, that's the second site that we're uh, putting in an application for a historic uh, registered Texas la uh, landmark uh, designation. Shifting gears just a little bit, you mentioned that uh, Reverend S.H. James uh, uh, was in a film. Tell us a little bit about that experience. That's right. So uh, the Second Baptist Church uh, starts in the Baptist Settlement neighborhood and then after the uh, federal housing project of the Victoria Courts uh, relocates. Uh, what th I think the language of the time was that the, the uh, uh, people who lived there, the residences were extracted uh, for the Victoria Courts to be built. Uh, well, um, S.H. James uh, becomes pastor of Second Baptist Church um, when it uh, relocates away from the Baptist Settlement neighborhood, but he's a pastor there for over four decades, some 48 years, and uh, in his earliest years, he was also involved with uh, some acting. <laughs> and uh, Myra Davis Hemings, who is a, a very well-known name in this uh, neighborhood, especially among uh, Delta Sigma Theta sorority members, uh, she was one of the founders of that sorority. And here in San Antonio, she had a a group of uh, actors that were called the Hemings Players with her husband, John Hemings. Uh, and in the 1940s, uh, a early independent black filmmaker by the name of Spencer Williams was in San Antonio and in Texas to make a number of films. And uh, there was a film called Juke Joint that was uh, filmed in the old Keyhole Club, for example. At least it's, it's rumored. I'm still doing the work to establish which scenes uh, were featured in that. But uh, one of his other films was called Go Down Death. And uh, it stars both Myra Davis Hemings and Pastor S.H. James. Uh, and uh, he plays a uh, pastor of a church who is um, basically, uh, 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 he, he is, um, there's an, an attempt to use a photograph of him in a 
cons in, cons uh, in a uh, compromising position to blackmail him uh, by a local juke joint owner that's played by uh, Spencer Williams. And so S.H. Uh, James has this uh, legacy in what were called race films of the time. These were black uh, produced, uh, black starring uh, films that were uh, played in segregated theaters uh, in the South and, and, and all across the country. And so it's uh, part of uh, the S.H. James legacy that I think is important to remember uh, his contributions to uh, black culture in that time period uh, and also Myra Davis Hemings contributions to black film and black culture in that period. Any thoughts about the next markers that are going to be looked at? Yes, well, uh, in addition to getting these grocery store uh, markers, uh, th what it does, is it opens up an opportunity for us to tell the stories about the neighborhoods in which they're located. So uh, in addition to the landmark designation for the store, we can also uh, uh, apply for a marker uh, to tell people about the larger neighborhood. And then that gets us a chance to tell the story about the churches that were there, about M Mount Zion's original location. There is a historical Paul, marker. Course, as well, yeah. That's right, that's right. There is a historical marker for Second Baptist Church, but it's at the East Commerce location. Well, uh, it would be great for us to also have a marker in its original location down in the Baptist Settlement neighborhood. I think it's important for people to be aware of that uh, connection as well. Cemeteries, are there any uh, work being done for that? Well, uh, yes, indeed. We, we, a lot of the cemeteries are, are uh, uh, known and uh, have markers, but w what we're actually discovering is that the people who are buried in those cemeteries, uh, their stories haven't been told enough. So uh, the, uh, you know, P.F. Roberts and his uh, mother, um, uh, is all, uh, they are uh, buried in, here in San Antonio in one of the cemeteries, and uh, I think it's important to uh, have those uh, markers also also in the cemetery so that we know the connection between them and the building of the black community uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century here in San Antonio. Any research you've done into the civil rights history of uh, church leaders or markers uh, related to visits with Dr. King or any of those uh, early uh, civil rights pioneers or post-emancipation? Uh, uh, absolutely. Well, S.H. James, of course, is uh, the first African-American member of the San Antonio City Council, and, uh, and in the 1960s, he uh, leads uh, the efforts to uh, have a desegregation ordinance. Um, so he's uh, very important in uh, the, um, the efforts to desegregate uh, San Antonio. And, and, and this is important when we talk about uh, the early uh, 20th century, uh, you know, turn of the century, uh, the importance of the black church in San Antonio. You know, they used to say that uh, Sunday was the most segregated day in America, right? Because, uh, you know, black and, and white uh, churchgoers were, you know, seen in, in segregated spaces. And so we usually think about the efforts to uh, desegregate our society as, as happening in the schools, but a lot of these efforts were led by uh, our religious leaders. And so S.H. James leading that desegregation effort in the 1960s is an important example of that. But when we look at today, we can still sort of see that the legacy of that earlier period of segregation. Uh, Sundays are still, you know, pretty segregated in, in, in the, the United States today. And, and I think that uh, there's still a, a ways to go to, to sort of overcome some of the, the history of that, um, uh, you, know, you know, segregated Sundays that we talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. Gentry, for your work and your contributions today. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.